All right, so then gang, ultimately we wanna show time data on our app. And to do that, we're gonna to have to use some kind of API to get time data. So I'm gonna be using this free API here called World Time API, and I'm gonna leave the link to this down below. So if we go down here and scroll to the bottom, we can see if we go to the time zone list, it's gonna give us a list of all the different locations we can request to to find out the time in that location. So there's quite a lot of different places around the world that we can query. So I'm gonna do a search, control F, and then look for London, and I'm gonna click on that. And now you can see we get different information about this on the web page, but this is all the information we get from the response if we make an HTTP request to this. So we can see the day of the week, the day of the year, the week number, etc., and we also get the times down here. So we can see the current date time, and uh, we can see the offset. So we'd need to add this to this over here to get the actual time, okay? So let's now have a look at this. We can see we can get it in JSON or plain text format. We're gonna work with JSON. So if we click on this, we can see this is the data we get back, the different properties, and this is the endpoint that we actually need to make a request to to get this data. So I'm just gonna copy that dude and minimize this. And then over here, this is where we want to make the request for that data. So first of all, I'm gonna delete all this stuff right here because we don't need that. And I'm gonna change this to get time. And when we call it, we need to change it over here as well, get time. And by the way, we're still in the loading screen over here. And then inside here, we can first of all make the request, right? So to do that, we're gonna say response, response. So we're storing the response inside this object. Then we're gonna await this response first of all. We get the data by using the get function and we pass in the endpoint right here. So now we're gonna go out and get that data and what we could do is just print that data. But first of all, let's turn it into some kind of format that we can use. So we'll say map and then the data is equal to JSON decode and we pass in the data or the response that we get back and then the body of that response which is where the actual data is stored. So let us now print out this data. So I'm gonna say print and then the data. So I'm gonna now save this and open up this panel. Then I'm gonna hot restart by clicking this. And we should see after a second, we get all of this data back, okay? So the things that we need are the date time, which is somewhere down here. I can't properly see this, so let me just move this up. Okay, there it is, date time. This is the thing that we need right here. Okay, and we also need the offset, which is right here, because we need to add this, this extra hour, to the date time to get the actual local time inside that city. So then, let me now minimize this and let's sort this out. First of all, I'm going to comment this dude out because we don't want to print it every time we get the data. And the next thing we want to do is get those properties from this JSON data. So I'm going to say down here, get properties from data. Okay, so we want the date time and we also want the offset, they're both strings. So let's say string and then first of all, date time is equal to the data, which is this stuff we get right here. And then we want the date time property. So date time like so. Okay, so now we've got one of those things. And then the second thing we want is the offset. So we'll say the offset is equal to data and then the offset property. So that makes sense, doesn't it? We've got those two properties now, the date time and the offset. So what I'm going to do is print those bad boys first of all. I'm going to say date time and then underneath that print offset just to make sure that this is working as we're going along. One of the worst things to do in coding is to write a hell of a load of code and then preview it. Preview it as you're going along because if you do make a mistake, you can see it right there when you make the mistake rather than getting down 20 minutes down the line and not knowing where you messed up. So if we save this now, open up this panel and hot restart, then we should see after a second these two things. Okay, so we get null for one of these things and that's because this property right here is not actually offset, it's ut and then c underscore offset. So that's a prime example of what I just did. If I was to carry on later on and use this somewhere, this offset variable, then I might not know where the problem is. But since I did it right here, right now, I know that this was the problem. So anyway, let's try this again. Hot restart. 
and hopefully now we don't get null and we get the plus one. Okay, so this is kind of like the date time string and this is a string as well, which is plus one. Now we need a way to kind of put these together. So add this one to this and also get it in a format which might be a little bit better. So what we're gonna do is actually convert this into a date time string or a date time object. So we can do that in Dart pretty simply underneath here and in fact I'm going to comment these two out as well because I don't want to see that inside the console every time I run this. So the third thing we want to do down here is create a date time object essentially. Now we can do that in Dart by using the date time class and then we want this to be called now. So we're just creating a variable which is of type date time and we're going to set that equal to a date time object like so. So we're instantiating this and what we want to do is actually use a method called pass on this and we need to pass in this date time variable and we'll pass it in right there. So we're taking this date time string which is a string which represents the date and passing it into this method on the date time class and what that does is actually convert it into a date time object. So if I was to say now print now down here and save this. Let's open up this dude and hot refresh or hot restart. And now we can see this is the new kind of date time. Doesn't look that much difference, but now it is a date time object. All right, so now we have that. Now it's a date time object. We can use a method on this date time object, this instance of it, which is now because that's where we store the instance. We can use a method called add. And we use this method to add a specified amount of time or a duration to a date object. Now we've seen the duration object in a past tutorial as well. We use the duration object like this and we pass in how many seconds or hours or you know days we want. So it's gonna be hours in our case. And what we want to do is pass in this offset. But at the minute, it's a string which has a plus in it and a zero. And in fact, let me comment this out and then just uncomment this so we can see it. I'm gonna save it and then go to run and then hot restart. And we can see we have these two characters at the start which we don't really need. So what I could do, or rather, to be honest, it's just this one, isn't it? But we could make a substring from this which is just the actual one, the number itself. So I'm gonna say over here, I'm gonna say dot and then use a string method called substring. And then inside there, I'm gonna go from position one to position three. Now, if we preview this now and hot restart, then hopefully we should see just zero one because now we've created a substring from that string, okay? So now we can use this number, we can turn it into an integer because currently it's still a string, but we can turn it into an integer and I'll show you how to do that in a second and then add that integer as an hour to this date, which is what we wanna do. So let me comment out that dude again and uncomment these two. And then here, this expects an integer and we have a string. So we can convert that into a string by saying int dot pass and then passing in that string. So it's gonna take that string and pass it into an integer. So zero one string will now become zero one integer. So we pass in the offset variable and I think that should pretty much do it. Let me just put a semicolon at the end. And now if we print this, it's gonna be an extra hour. So let me save it and a run, let me go to hot restart, and hopefully we should now see this is the actual time in London. And actually that's still an hour behind and that's because I made a glaring error. This is non-destructive, so we need to update the now variable. So we need to say now is now equal to now.add and then this extra time. So now we're updating the now variable because this is non-destructive, it doesn't directly update it. So if I save it now and then go to hot restart, hopefully now it should say 5.54 or something similar. Awesome. So now we get the updated time. That is the right time now in London. So in the future, we could update this location over here to several different locations when a user can choose that. And then it's gonna go out, make that request and get the time in that location. So all of this is looking pretty good now, but this is quite a lot of logic right here. And I don't really want it just sitting here on the loading page. It makes it messy and it makes our code a bit less reusable. So in the next video, we'll see how to separate all of this logic into its own class in a new file.